My Charles Dickens collection is glaring at me. I never pretended to have taste. This is not going well for me. Hi friends, it's Claire, and today we are going to be doing a TBR unhaul. As a reader, I have a lot of books on my Goodreads to be read list. Like a lot, like too many. And every once in a while I go through and I'll remove a couple of books. I'll be like, do you know what? I'm not actually interested in that one anymore. It's been a while. But I've been thinking, I want to cleanse. I want everything that's on my list to be a book that I really want to read. I don't have time to read books that I'm only somewhat interested in. This is going to be an elite list. The other thing that's prompted this is I have a TBR video coming out hopefully soon. It's a TBR game of sorts and it's really making me rethink some of the books that are on this list and I just want to feel good about the books on this list. So come with me on this cleansing Marie Kondo style journey. I've never actually watched anything Marie Kondo or read any of her stuff, so I don't really know how that works, but we'll see. So as of now, I have 195 books that I want to read. It's just not, it's not gonna happen. The summer I turned pretty, do I need to read this book? I honestly think I've outgrown it and I feel kind of bad because I loved To All the Boys I've Loved Before, I loved those books, and I do love contemporary romances. I just don't really see myself ever getting to these books, so... Oh, can I just do it like that? I can. Well, now we know. We're gonna actually take this one off of the list. Is there a remove from shelf option? There must be. What? What do you want from me? Remove from shelves. Is that only on phones? Oh no. This is not going well for me. Okay, it took me a hot second, but I figured it out. I've told you all so many times I am a grandma, but no one believes me until they actually see me in action. Goodbye, summer I turn pretty. Cinder, yes, I will read. Ring in the Crown, I remember when it came out, it sounded interesting. I'm gonna leave this one on my list. I don't know if I'll ever actually read it or not, but it doesn't sound like something I'd hate, so. Attachments. Mm, I have very mixed feelings on this. I think this is the only Rainbow Rowell book I've never read. That's a lie. It's her only like contemporary that I haven't read. I don't know that I'll ever get to it though, to be quite honest with you. I've heard a lot of really mixed reviews, majority being negative. I've heard it's creepy and I don't love that. Let me see what people have said. I'm heavily influenced by others' opinions, by the way, so if you get upset with that, you better leave now. Heather from Bookables gave it five stars, my friend Olivia gave it five stars, Hannah from Two Bookish Hannahs gave it one stars, and DNF'd. I'll leave it for now, I guess. Okay, Just One Year by Gail Foreman. This is a follow-up book to Just One Day, and I'm never gonna read it. <laughs> I'm never gonna read this book. Even though like I wanted to know what happened after, like I just don't have the energy to read a whole book. I'd have to reread just one day, which I liked the book, but I don't need to reread it. Goodbye. Now on the other hand, there is a novella that I believe is here. And I might read the novella because I remember the book ended on a cliffhanger and it's kind of bothered me for years. For real, I want to read this book. I just haven't been able to find a copy of it anywhere. But I mean, the main characters are named Miranda and Claire. So I have to. A Little Something Different by Sandy Hall. This has been on my TBR for forever. I think it'll be a cute book one day. I do just need to get my hands on it. I see a lot of mixed reviews, but I'm gonna leave it for now. Summer Days and Summer Nights I want to read next summer. It's a bunch of short stories by some of my favorite authors. The Skies Everywhere by Jandy Nelson. I don't know. I liked I'll Give You the Sun but I don't really remember it. A heartbreaking and hilarious journey of profound sorrow and mad love. Okay, well, the heartbreaking and hilarious sounds kind of interesting and I love profound sorrow. I think I'll read it one day. I used to be so good about just going to the library and just grabbing random contemporary books that looked interesting to me. That's how I found some of my favorite contemporary books and like, I don't remember half of them, but I used to not even get them recommended to me through friends or Goodread, just the library. I feel like this is one of those books I would have seen and been like, let's give it a try. Lord of the Rings, I don't want to, but I know I have to. Same with, is that Little Women? Yeah, I'm gonna read it someday because I want to be able to say I read them. Literally, why is my hair so difficult with me? Whatever. Effortless With You by Lizzie Charles, I feel like was a Goodreads recommendation back in the day. You know how Goodreads would be like, books recommended for you, and they were the most random books that nobody would ever recommend to you. This was one of those, and it's probably been on here since 2013. Yeah, published in 2013. Wait, no, okay, this does sound cute. I sound, I would vibe with this. Okay, really, wait it. I'm doing a terrible job with this. The Art of Laney. Another one that I think Goodreads recommended to me back in the day. There's just so many new books that I always want to read that I never get to these old ones that have been on here for so long. It's a fake dating one. That's cute. <gasps> 
M read this in 2014 and said loved, 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 loved. Okay, M, 14 year old you loved it, so 21 year old me probably will too. Hex Hall. Ooh, interesting. I was never actually interested in this book, but I loved Rachel Hawkins' Rebel Bell series and I kind of just wanted more. But also, I'm never gonna get to these books at this point. I know this. There are other books that I would rather read, so goodbye, Hex Hall. Whew. Look at me clearing a book. Feels good. The Rose Society? I don't know. It's the sequel to The Young Elites. And I really liked The Young Elites and I was looking forward to The Rose Society, but then like it was a year later that it came out and I didn't remember things from The Young Elites, so I'd have to go back, reread The Young Elites, and then read The Rose Society, and it's not gonna happen. <laughs> Although I do really like Marie Lu. I think her writing's really great and I want to read more of her other books. Maybe someday I'll go back to it, but I'm not gonna have it like on my radar. My true love gave to me, similar to Summer Days and Summer Nights, next winter baby we'll get to it someday the last time we say goodbye this came out at the same time i think as all the right places because i remember thinking they looked similar and i wanted to read one or the other because they both were hard hitting and i can only take so much hard hitting at a time and so i never got around to this one i feel like it probably is a really amazing book but i struggle with hard hitting books i read as escapism and if it's a really good book i will read it but I feel like this one, it's been out for a long time, it's been on this list for a long time, and I think it's time I just remove it. I don't think I'm ever gonna get to it. Maybe it's a great book. Let me know in the comments below if any of these you're like, what are you doing? You need to read it. You bet I'll add it back. I just need to be persuaded. This is another one, Every Last Word. I feel like these all came out around the same time. This could actually be a really great book for some mental illness representation, which I'm always looking for more of. Oh my gosh, Nicole gave it five stars back in 2016, but still. Okay, I'm gonna leave it. Oh, Mindy Kaling, is everyone hanging out without me? I have several celebrity memoirs on here because before I started listening to fiction audiobooks, the only audiobooks I would listen to were celebrity memoirs narrated by the celebrities themselves and they were always actors or comedians because I'm just fascinated by all of that. Mindy Kaling you get to stay on here. The Bronze Key is the third book in the Magisterium series that I am never going to finish. <laughs> Goodbye. What are you? You look like a classic. Oh, it's Hill of Two Cities. God, I have to leave the classics on here because I will read them someday. My Charles Dickens collection is glaring at me. The Way Back to You, I don't remember. Who are you? Well, let's see who's read it. I bet you Miranda M. I can't call her M. I bet you M read it. Yep, there it is. Five stars. I cried, I laughed, I cried some more, and I fell in love with this book. 2016. That's how long this has been on here because M said that and I was like, Fun. Oh, Chain of Iron Sting, obviously Chain of Thorn Sting. Kindred Spirits, what are you? Another Rainbow Raffle book that I never read? Is it a book? Is it a novella? Okay, this is like a nerdy, I think, short story. Mmm, will I ever finish the Red Queen series? It's the same situation as The Young Elites where I liked the first two books, but then the third book came out and had been too long. I didn't remember things, so I'd have to go back and reread the first two books. But maybe someday I will. Will I? Untitled novella? By a novella by Sarah J. Mass. <gasps> Court of Thorns and Roses 3.2? What is this published in 2021? What is this? I'm confused, but I'm excited. Court of Thorns and Roses 5? You bet I'll be reading that one. I'll meet you there. Is this another one that M probably recommended to me? Let's see, has M read it and did she give it five stars? Here it is. This book was so beautiful. I wish that everyone in the world could read it and love it as much as I did. Definitely one of my favorite books of all time. Oh, and then 2018, this book was just as magical moving the second time around. I also still believe that everyone should read this book. Just saying, I bet she was adding me because back in 2018, who else did she have on Goodreads? Okay, M, I'll read it. Don't know what it's about but I'll read it. The other Red Queen book. Oh, Tahar Mafi's middle grade fantasy, but I am interested in this. I believe it's like a Persian folklore retelling, so we're keeping furthermore. Bloodlines. Em and Nicole might kill me if I remove it. I honestly don't know if I'll ever get to it. I really don't think I will. Because I feel like I'd have to reread Vampire Academy to read Bloodlines. And the only reason I read Vampire Academy was so I could read Bloodlines because it was M's favorite series back in the day. Oh, the sun is also a star. Tyler from Bookables was passionate about this book. It was beautiful, it was magical, it was heartbreaking. It dealt with immigration, strained family life, racism, it had diversity. Oh, wait, 
okay. I guess I'm reading. The Crown's Game. A Nikolai. We do love our Nikolais. This sounds kind of like a Throne of Glass, but it's probably written better because as much as I love Throne of Glass, the first book's not really great. I mean, I can admit it, okay? I never pretended to have taste. Not many people have read it. Why I need more people to tell me if I'll like it or not. There's a lot of mixed reviews. I'll leave it for now. Has anyone read this book? Come forward, please. A Crown of Wishes. What are you about? Oh, The Star Touched Queen 2. I haven't even got to The Star Touched Queen 1. I'm gonna remove this one because maybe I'll read The Star Touched Queen. If I like it, then I'll just go to the second book. I don't really put second books on my TBR anymore unless I've read the first book just because it gets to be too much for my brain. It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I think I just skipped a ton but that's okay. I'll probably read that one someday because I think that's a lot of people's favorite or one of their favorite Colleen Hoovers. A Quiet Kind of Thunder don't know her. Steffi has been a selective mute for most of her life. <gasps> There's a Reese in this book. The new boy at school. Oh! He's deaf and her knowledge of basic sign language means she's assigned to look after him. Therese doesn't matter, Steffi doesn't talk and they find ways to communicate. Steffi finds she does have a voice. <laughs> oh my god, why am I emotional just reading about this? This came out in 2017, mixed reviews from friends. I'm gonna leave it for now. Love and Luck, the sequel to Love and Gelato. Once again, I need to reread Love and Gelato, but Love and Luck sounds cute and I was really excited when it first came out. I just couldn't get it from the library at the time. Witchwood is the sequel to Furthermore. I'm just gonna leave it. Virginia Woolf, A Room of One's Own. Is this an acting book? This is probably, it's an essay by Virginia Woolf. Okay, well, listen. When I said this is an acting book, I meant this is probably something I was told that I should read when I was in school. Women in Fiction, a feminist text. Never mind. I thought it had to do with school. I still think a teacher recommended this to me at some point. I'm gonna have to read it, but that's not gonna be one that I look forward to. Turtles All the Way Down, am I ever gonna read? I feel like this is another mental health rep book from what I've heard, but I don't know what it's about. People have given it a lot of mixed reviews. I'll leave it. I might get to it someday. It's not the end of the world if I don't. War Cross by Marie Lu. Don't even know what it's about, but I feel like I'll probably want to give it a try. A lot of five stars. Okay, we'll leave it. Geekerella, I think it's supposed to be cute, so I'll leave it. Princess Diarist, my absolute Queen Carrie Fisher, it stays. The Darkest Legacy, I think I can probably remove because it's been so long since I've read The Darkest Mind. Is this the fourth book? <gasps> oh, it follows Zoo. Do you know what? I'll leave it because I might reread The Darkest Mind someday. Lost Book of the White, I swear I'll get to it. A bunch of Untitled by Cassandra Clare. It's probably from These Wicked Powers, which is going to be her next series. And I could cry waiting for it. And Ember in the Ashes, I will read this book this year. I'm very excited. Craft of comedy? What's this? Who told me to read it is the question. Ash Princess. Her mother, the Fire Queen, was murdered before her eyes. Oh, okay, so she's got some character trauma to unpack. Ooh, this looks fascinating. Hopefully someday I will get to it because it looks like something I want to give it a try. Don't know what this book is. True and False by David Mamet. It's a Pulitzer Prize winning, oh, a playwright. It's all the books that I know I should read to like literally help myself out, but I just, ooh. A lot of energy. The presence process is probably something I saw on like a self-help website. I don't think I'm ever gonna read it to be quite honest. Like it looks like it's probably a good book but I feel like there are other books that my therapist has told me to read that I should probably read first. We're getting there. Am I even halfway through this video? It's already too long. Agatha Christie, Evil Under the Sun, I have to read because it's one of M's favorites. The Wrong Side of Right. Don't know what this is. Oh, it's another hard hitting book. This one can stay. Oh my gosh, M gave it five stars in 2015 and the only words she knew in 2015 were loved, loved, loved. I love you, M. <laughs> And I Darken. This book came out in 2016, so goodbye and I Darken. You just don't look fascinating enough to hold my attention. I'm sure you are a fascinating book, but maybe not five years later. Ellie Kemper's memoir, The Hate You Give, Snow and Love, those ones stay. Something Wonderful's, I think about Rogers and Hammerstein, that one stays. The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. I've never read anything by Neil Gaiman. Mare would kill me, gotta get to it. Mastery of Love is the sequel to The Four Agreements and I should probably read it because The Four Agreements actually was a very good book. What If It's Us by Becky Albertalli and Adam Silvera. I'll probably never actually get to. I gotta be real with myself here. I'm cleaning so many. This is better than I thought it was going to be. Subtle Art of Not Giving Up. Mm. I'm not gonna read it. I don't even know who Mark Manson is. I probably should, but I don't. Another Cassandra Clare book stays, Gifts of Imperfection. I think I 
actually listened to a podcast with one of my favorite Broadway actresses, Sarah Bogus, saying that she read this book and that it helped her a lot as a performer, so I'll probably keep it. Another Mindy Kaling memoir stays. Tina Fey's memoir, Carol Burnett's memoirs stay. Hearing greatly, another Brene Brown. Um, I think this one my mom read and told me that, like, so that one stays. What is this one? The Light Between Worlds? No one I know has read it. What the heck? I'm gonna leave it for now. We're gonna maybe give that one a chance and just see. The Map From Here to There is the sequel from The Start of Me and You by Emery Lord, and I'm really looking forward to reading that one. I just have to reread the first book, Graceling. I don't know if I'll ever actually read it, but we'll keep it for now. Rebel is the fourth book that just came out last year, I believe, for the Legend Trilogy. And I'm so sad because I sold all of my books from the Legend Trilogy two years ago and I didn't even really get anything for them. And now Rebel came out and I remember Champion ending and me just like sobbing and wanting more. And I finally got more, but now I feel like I have to reread those books. Imagine me, I have to read. It's the final book in the Shatter Me series. I gotta get to it. White Rose, um, the only reason I have this one is because I did a play based off of the White Rose story last year and I loved it. I thought the story was fascinating and empowering. I do think the book would be interesting. Veronica Roth has a book. I didn't really want to read her sci-fi book, but this book sounded fascinating to me. I think it's about what happens to the hero afterwards like basically dealing with all that trauma which you know i love i love to read about it conventions of a casting director i'm going to remove okay now we're getting in more recent ones so i think these are ones that like i've shelved in the last year or so all the stars and teeth will i ever read this oh this one only came out in 2020 i probably will then i need to read more fantasy oh catherine gave it three stars i'll leave it for now a lot of people have it as to read so i don't want to feel left out again again by E. Lockhart. The only E. Lockhart book I've ever read was We Were Liars and because I read it right when it came out and there wasn't like hype or talk about it, I loved it. But I don't know about this. I guess I'll leave it for now. What's this book? Sisters of Sword and Song. Oh it's a YA standalone fantasy. I do love a good standalone because I don't have to worry about rereading books. I will give it a chance. Girl, Serpent, Thorn, I feel like I've heard really mixed things about. I'm honestly just not interested anymore. I'm just gonna remove it. And if someone gets mad at me, let me know why and I'll probably add it back. What's the Bone Shard Daughter? Lynn sounds like a baddie. I'll leave it. Why not? Instant Karma. I'm not sure. I'll leave it for now. I'll see how I feel after I read The Lunar Chronicles. Sex and Vanity by Kevin Kwan. I actually didn't love Crazy Rich Asians, the book. Love the movie. Literally one of my all-time favorite movies. I didn't love the book. I think that's because I love the movie so much and they were just such different vibes. But one of my friends was reading Sex and Vanity and said she was enjoying it. So we'll see. Wayward Son. I do want to give a chance. I will need to reread Carry On, but luckily... I own it. Mmm, will I ever read a rogue of one's own? I liked Bringing Down the Duke, but I feel like historical romance just isn't really my genre, even though Bringing Down the Duke was super cute, but there are other genres I'd rather be reading. Oh, <gasps> Catherine gave it only two stars. That's all I need to know. Goodbye. No exit. I don't know. I don't read thrillers, but I want to be someone who reads thrillers. It's an endless struggle. I feel like No Exit, I'm fascinated by the premise, but I've also heard it's graphic and I I don't know how I'll do with graphic. I haven't read many graphic books. I think the most graphic I can think of recently was lore and I was fine with it. But mm, if you see anything on here that you're like, don't bother, let me know. Cause clearly I want to get rid of more books, but I feel pretty great with these choices. Yes, those are all the books. Here we have our final list, our final, oh, <gasps> she's so short. Oh my gosh, I got rid of like 14 books, which is not as great as I thought, but it's fine. That's still 14 less books to read. We're down to 180. I'm feeling good about it. All right, if you made it to the end of this video, round of applause for you. Thank you for sticking it out. I did not expect it to be that long. I thought I already kind of had an idea of what I was going to keep and what I wasn't, but then I realized I didn't know the plot of half of the books, so. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you let me know in the comments below if I made any mistakes because I would love to amend them. <laughs> Definitely keep your eyes out and look forward to the TBR game that will be coming your way hopefully within the month. I'm really excited about it. I feel okay with my choices. If I end up having to read like a classic or something, I'll be a little sad, but it is what it is. It'll be good for me in the long run, probably. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos in the future. I'll see you next time. Bye.